Back at Saratoga for the second of six grade one races. That means the forego kicks off the all grade one pick five, culminating in the Travers Stakes. And maybe you're live with Gamin, maybe not. Maybe you just like the forego. Certainly uh, Scott Shapiro seems like a more wide open affair than the ballerina. Yeah, no doubt about it. At one of the more wide open of the grade one races. Definitely a lot of respect, though, to number seven, Yalpon, the five to two morning line favorite on David Aragano's. Morning line does one of the best jobs in the business. So I'd expect this one to probably go off favored. Uh, didn't see a lot of early speed in this race, much like we talked about in the Gamin race, the ballerina. How did you see it? Did you see a lot of pace? Yeah, no, de definitely a little more than in the ballerina, although none as fast as Gamin. So kind of would be interesting if she were in here, uh, could probably make some noise as well. And uh, the, the morning line, I thought accurate, but interesting in a lot of these grade ones, there's a clear potential single. That's not the case here. The board is going to be very flat. And maybe one of those situations, instead of trying to gamble on a spread and catch a long shot, if you could narrow toward one of, I won't say long shot, but toward one of the longer shots, maybe a mini separation from everyone else looking to spread in here. Uh, we did not separate from each other. We both like uh, Ferenc Fire. Just kind of feel like he's cycling back into this one. Maybe wouldn't mind seeing it spirited up front for him to get the best chance late. Uh, but, you know, where you could throw a blanket over most most of these, the six to one co fourth choice caught my eye. Yeah, not a horse that's been at his best overall at Saratoga. Definitely prefers the wide turns, it seems like, at Belmont. But thought had some excuses of late. Finally gets off the inside, was on the rail in two starts. And then last time broke from the three hole, took up quickly, but I don't think it impacted him that much. So if you see that in the running lines, but what I like is that he was wide uh, most of the way, especially on the turn when they, uh, and into the lane on a day where the inside was great. Uh, the Vanderbilt winner uh, in that race, Lexitonian was along the inside, came back battling back to get the job done that day. I don't think the Vanderbilt was a very productive race for a grade one, but I do think for fire with the outside draw and the price is at least worth looking at. Yeah, Lexitonian got the win that day. Whitmore was third. Uh, I always hate to uh, denigrate the old pros, 4.4 million in earnings and a champion, but just seems like uh, better days behind. And, and one of these, I just would have to think we'll get the better of Whitmore again. Yeah, we talked. I talked about the outside not being the place to be. Whitmore was along the inside most of that race, so him finishing up better than Ferenc Fire doesn't matter much to me. And I agree with you 100%. Ed Whitmore, still very, very hard-trying horse, but seems a little bit of cut below. Really, maybe he kind of had that will to win in the past. More seems like he runs with his friends uh, to the mm -hmm. wire a bit more now. So Whitmore and Lexitonian fades for me. Mind control, any interest in him? Uh, some, uh, the seven to two, uh, admittedly friends fire at six to one mischievous Al Alex. I gave a little bit of a look toward just looking at the brisnet pace ratings thought from the rail. If he ends up having to go, uh, he could find himself in, in a decent spot. Mind control. One of those, if he were six to one, maybe I would have went with him as fourth or fifth choice. But when I saw that seven to two second choice, I thought maybe better value elsewhere. Yeah, maybe Todd Pletcher can get this horse back to his best races. Not that he's been a bad horse of late, and it was a very nice effort in the Nehrud on 4th of July when he ran 1-2 around the track with Ferenc Fire getting the best of the favorite that day. Mischievous Alex just doesn't seem to be the same horse to me after that massive 110 Brisnet speed rating mm -hmm. in the grade one Carter at Aqueduct. The last two races have been underwhelming. The Met Mile was understandable. I can't make an excuse for him in the Vanderbilt. Right. Yeah, and he's seven over to five. yeah, he was really poor with a really good trip, and he's 0 for 2, never hit the board at Saratoga. So he's a fade for me, but pretty solid value if you're looking for him to bounce back. All right, how, how deep are you going in the Maltese? Not too deep because I do think Yalpon is a must-use, and he is the 5-2 the two favorite. I'm losing for end fire. I may try to make a case for Chancet and Doubly Blessed in there just because of their massive prices, and I will be looking for a separator since we like I, uh, since I we're both on Gamine, and we'll talk about the Travers who we're both on in a, in another video. But how about you? How deep? Uh, I would say almost exactly the same, which I guess concerns me for how many others are going to do the same. But Doubly Blessed, you get Saez, Chancet, you get Gaffleyon. Hard to, I mean, that's just one of those like, oh, I let Sayas knock me out at a, on a $30 horse. And With knowing Acre. I'm narrow elsewhere, I, I just don't want to let him beat me.
Yeah, I'm kind of similar. The cutback could benefit that one and chance it. Not a ton of speed in here. Maybe Tyler uh, gets a little bit aggressive from the inside. Definitely a class check, but at 20 to 1, probably worth including. All right. The forego by no means a foregone conclusion should be a good one. Part of the bet back going on all day at twinspires.com slash offers to opt in. Check out our other videos. Lots of great one action to come.